in a second. I'd like to welcome everybody to another uh, episode of the Go-Go Roundtable. And this is our final one for our first year. Much love and respect everybody. We only had uh, three or four shows this uh, this first season because we started the last quarter. So, But the response has been great. And uh, this, this show is about that M in DMV. And uh, I wanted to speak personally for a minute because Air Raid uh has been so much to me personally, you know, um, it's very hard to put it into words because, um, so you guys see me talk about this, uh, SPC thing. The thing about the SPC is, um, for me is that, um, I, uh, I didn't move around C Pleasant, you know, I didn't, I didn't come around there and, uh, I have blood in the soil, right? Generations of blood. So the whole thing with the SPC is, you know, that crew has been there, uh, for generations. So we're not just talking about crack era and, and go-go's. We're talking about the mud, Fairmont Heights, you know, uh, Booker T. Homes. You know, that that's my trees. So my trees are Booker T. Homes, Fairmont Heights, blood generations. So I'm not just playing around with, you know, how much I love my tree and my area. That's what has made me what I am on both sides of the family. And I say that because in my era, you know, um, the D.C. Maryland rivalry was very, very real, very real. I mean, and I speak for especially like Prince George's County, because we have so many borders with PG County that you can literally walk across the street and be in D.C. And this correlates to why uh, air raid means uh, so much. I know to me personally, because. You know, you had that thing where everywhere you went, you know what I mean, especially if it wasn't in in Maryland, you know, you had that Maryland Bama thing that people used to call us. And the thing is, man, we had our you know, our own styles of doing things, legendary schools, you know, a uh, cold sense of style and things like that. But then when it came to the district, you know, that was that thing, that was that rivalry. And I mean, if people don't want to tell it, I'm gonna tell it because, you know, Air Raid just embodied what we were, you know, and I I got involved with them very young. So, you know, we're talking 13, 14, you know, you couldn't tell me there was nothing, right, but Doc, Ed, and Gogo Tim, because that's all I really could, you know, focus on. But those, I mean, of course, all of the bands, I don't know who they were, but I'm telling you, you couldn't tell me nothing about Air Raid, you know what I mean? All the grooves. What is the word? Which way do we go? I mean, I, I, all, it's a part of my soul, man. That's why when it came to doing Air Raid, I wanted to speak for a quick second because, you know, a lot of stars, right, from a bunch of bands in the district, that they pass through Air Raid. You know what I mean? That's how powerful Air Raid was, man. And the thing is, I'll never forget when, as you know, we had Go-Go Wars. We had Go-Go Band Wars. Everybody had their bands, you know. And I was sort of a rebel with my bands because I, you know, of course I had Air Raid. And, of course, everybody loved and admired that early 80s Rare Essence. I mean, I'm going to speak personally. You know, I just don't think that uh, at their height in the early 80s, okay, nobody ever outranked them. You know, they were like, so if you had asked me, I'm saying, my my uh number one band would have been that early eighties essence. I mean, I'm telling you, I never heard nothing like them. Okay? But then my check me out, my one B is my Maryland zone. Cause I'll tell you this. If you put 
the height of what Air Raid was, right? Especially in the 80s, man. I mean, if you put them on the card and put everybody there, Essence, Chuck, EU, Class, you put them all on there. Chance, put a, have, a, have a whole old Coliseum go-go with 12 bands. I promise you, one of the bands they're going to be talking about at the end of that is going to be the Maryland boys, boy. Now, that's what I, I'm trying to tell you. And I remember in closing, you know, I had my bands, you know, Chance, Class, you know, Reality. You know? I remember in uh, those mid-80s, early mid-80s, right, they used to call, they used to call Trinidad Go, they used to call Mickey, Lil Mickey. And I'm telling you, I read, my eyes lit up like a Christmas tree, man. You know, really. When one of the big boys came, he said, look here. He said, I got something for you. He said, I know you love reality, man. He said, look, he said, you know, you know your man play for Air Raid now. And I remember, what? They said, yeah, Lil Mickey play for Air Raid. It was just, it was over for me. You know, it was over. And when I heard Mick playing for him, and why did I specify that? Because this Go-Go Roundtable was established in 2006. And the two people who inspired that for me were Donald Doc Spencer and Milton Freeman. Love you guys, man. So let's get into this, man. And happy holidays to everybody, man, from the uh, LDTV and the Go-Go Roundtable, and we have a lot of good things coming. Stick with us. Much love and respect. Peace. And I got one of the legends right here, Go-Go, Doc, from Air Raid. And Doc, I want to ask you a question. Is this the last time we're going to see Air Raid, or is this going to be a rebirth of a legend? Get ready for Merlin's own Red Hot Funk Man Air Raid.
Johnny Gates. Hey, everybody call me Go-Go John. I've been knowing Doc. I've been following Doc since like the 80s when he was playing with Air Raid. Didn't really personally know him. Kind of know him about, say, about five years ago. He's just a cool dude. All right, all right. say since back in 1981 I always been a Red Essence fan Air Raid fan EU especially Chuck Brown the Godfather Go Go Junkyard all the old school bands and and also the up and coming band like you know like Backyard from the 90s and Vibe and, and all the other bands like that I would have to say um, oh man I had so many with Air Raid uh, I would have to say, soccer to me. And also, sweet Lisa. Thank you. And also, Hollywood. Good to see you. What's happening, Tony? Yeah. And you know that's right. Hey, ladies, I'll give it to you like you never had it before. I know it makes you scream, yell, or holler for both. You hear what I said, baby? I said, I'll give it to you like you never had it before. The best Congo player, I would have to say, of course I love Gogo Ert, but when Jogger Boogie was playing with him, it, I mean, both of them had their different style, but both of them had that drive to keep it going, so I really can't say, but Jogger Boogie was the man. I swear to goodness. Let me see y'all get to us, y'all. Captain Height. Right on. Right over the Capitol High School and the Hill Pass crew. Also like to send it out to the Apollo crew, y'all. And Blazeburg. The was The Benny crew. Right on. Uh. One for the little rascals. To be honest with you, I'm a Cab fan. I mean, Ed had his own style, but John Cavalu, he reminded me of somewhat like a smooth little Benny. You know, he was just smooth with his words, but, you know, but Ed had his own style too. I love Ed too, so, you know, like I said, everybody had their own style rapping back in the day or talking on the mic. You know, like Benny, he had that drive for us. And Funk was always, you know, talking to the crowd and playing with the crowd. So everybody had their own style. I would have to say, it's a 1983. I had the CD when they telling Doc to stand up while he was playing the drums. That thing cranking right there, man. That thing is cranking. <laughs> Man, who come to boogie, man? I, I, I love that beat, you know what I'm saying? And then when they bring that groove in, man, hey, that's my favorite, man. I, I, I still love it to the day. Man, first of all, 
let me say happy birthday to my brother Doc, man. We love you, man. You know, we here to do this thing for you, man. We gonna do it big. Uh, man, enjoy your birthday, man. God bless you and love you. Um, as far as the early days, man, what a lot of people don't know about me in terms of air raid is when I first got with air raid, man, I was a roadie, man. So a lot of people don't know that. So um, what happens is uh, I set equipment for like several years, man, and then, uh, yes, sir. Happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, baby. That's Big Drake, dog. Big Drake. Yeah, so I set up equipment for about a year and a half, several years, man. And our roller time player, Kevin Weller, man, when he left, man, um, uh, Doc asked me about the opportunity to, to play roller time. And, of course, I didn't know how to play. So, And that's one, one of the things I'll be so grateful for Doc for was uh, giving me that opportunity, man. He showed me how to hold sticks. I, I, I had no clue on how to play any kind of uh, any, any kind of percussion instrument, man. And, and it started from there in terms of me being on stage. We started there, me playing Robert Toms, and then Go-Go Mike left. And I fell into the mic, and then, you know, of course, we brought Olin in. And then that got me off the times, man, and I was able to just concentrate on just being, being on the front line and just, you know, doing things the way we wanted to do it, the AR style. That's unbelievable, man, to me, man, to think that that people look at me in the same manner that they look at Chuck, Lil Benny, and Funk. Yeah, that's unbelievable, man. One thing about that, I can say, just from my perspective, from, from the air raid perspective as well, man, when we were younger, man, we had such a drive to be to be great at what we was doing, man. So we was all learning together. You know, I was learning how to become a rapper. My doc was becoming a better drummer. Uh, Egg was becoming a better bass player. Uh, exactly. So, I mean, you know, where Ray have phases, you know, people in and out. But ultimately, man, one of the things that, that I always respected about Air Ray is it was always like family. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the models we use today, family first, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how we get down, man. We always have, and I, and I guess we always will, man. It was strange, man, but you know, like, for us, it was no different different between Calvary Heights or Southeast. So it was all the same. We grew, we all grew up in the same area. We did the same things in Suitland that they did down in Anacostia. You know what I'm saying? So uh, for us, it was so important for us to be the whole whole Merlin up because you know you had essence out of Southeast. Yeah. You know, you know had you had other groups out of Northeast or whatever. And you know, when we first got started, it was just one of those things we were just trying to get on the coattail of our bands. And once we got to the point where we really felt like we was doing our thing, we knew we had Merlin locked down and that's where it come from, Merlin Zones, man. I mean, there was no place in the state of Maryland that we couldn't go and play, man, where we had a crowd, man. And people loved us because, just because we was Merlin Zones.
don't know this, uh, my, one of my favorite memories that got to do with Doc started before Air Raid. So, like, a lot of people look at Doc, man, they probably look at me, especially now, the way we built now, you know what I'm saying? But in junior high school, we played on Francis Scott Key's basketball team together. So, and, and that was when I met him. That's when I first met him. And at that time, the little neighborhood that I lived in had a band, and they had their little band, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, the thing about Doc is it's just being so genuine, man. And, and even to the day, man, it's not a day to go by that I don't get a text from him, whether it be on GroupMe, Facebook, or uh, even a phone call and just say, hey, look, man, hey, brother, how you doing, man? I love you, man. And we just like to reciprocate that and give it back to him, man. Adrian, uh, Egg Norton, they call me Baseline Egg. Um, I'm one of the guys that started Air Raid, me, Doc, Keith. Uh, I've been knowing Doc since elementary school, way before we even had a band. We was in the boys club together, ran the block. I lived on the corner, he lived around the corner on the next block. So we go way back before the band. But uh, yeah, I play bass, and uh, I got a band now called Phase 2, but actually now we back again with, with Air Raid doing our thing again. So just trying to bring that old, true, real music go-go back, you know, you know, just doing our thing, man. When the music, the whole music scene has changed, you know, across the board. So if you listen to the new R&B, that's nothing like the R&B in the 70s or the 80s, so the go-go will change as, as well. So it's, 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 it's the people that's playing the go-go. You know, it's what their music level is or their creativity level is. So that's where that goes. You know, some guys still trying to do it, but most of them, they just all trying to fall into that trap or whatever that hot sound is. So that's how you get all the bands sounding the same, because nobody really has the original sound. You know, whatever's hot, that's what they doing. Gosh. Now we had, uh, we had a ja uh, jazzy one called D-Sharp, uh, Who Come the Boogie. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's up like that? I thought you knew it was a nice groove. Now we was all on, me and Keith asked me the keyboard player was about trying to play music, man. So we would just incorporate that jazzy, R&B-ish sound into the go-go rhythm, you know? And we would take take parts of a of a hot song that was out back then and incorporate it in, you know, to our groove with our own music.
We are actually a contemporary jazz slash funk group, but we do R&B as well. We do a lot of corporate and uh, weddings and, you know, retirement parties, anniversaries, that kind of stuff. We do clubs off and on. We did the Jazz Fest, Capital Jazz Fest. We won the competition in 2005, and we played every year up to 2012. And we got four CDs out working on our fifth one. So we just try to... We do the jazz, but it ain't the watered down smooth jazz. It's got that little edge to it. We can get our music on uh, www.phase2jazz. That's P H A Z E, the number two jazz.com. We on CD Baby, iTunes, all the internet sites. And uh, just look, call in Phase 2, and we'll pop up. And uh, we play at Blues Alley. We got a big show uh, September the 7th at Bethesda Blues and Jazz Club up in uh, Wisconsin Avenue in Bethesda. And uh, that should be real nice, man. So we just just trying to keep it true, man. You know, we love to do what we do. You know, if we get a big break and, and go national or whatever, that's fine. But we just do what we do, man, for the love of the art, man. Dude, you going way back. Oh, man, I got that dude do so much crazy stuff, man, and had you laughing, man. Just, just being his, yeah, just being in his company, man. He's real good people, man. You know, if you in his corner, he do anything for you, man. I got too many, too many memories to pick out one. Like I said, I knew Doc. We grew up on the same, like a block away from each other. Been knowing each other since elementary school. Wasn't even about the band. We was in the boys club competing against each other. That kind of thing. So, you know, I ain't got nothing but love for him and his family, man. We go way back, man. So that's why I'm here, man. Oh, well, you got you to gotta start with Chuck. Then you got Essence, of course, the 80s, the early 80s yeah, Essence. Exactly. You know, the original crew. They was they wanted to be messed with, man. You know, Funky Ned, that's my man. be top four top five but some people man you know i done ran into some cats now that i didn't know back in the day that still know me from back in the day and they used to tell me they said man y'all was the band joe they said yeah, it was it was play. chuck essence and then y'all that's what they would tell us I mean, you know we, we wasn't in it for that we were just having fun hey, love this dude right here man love this, this dude, my man, man. this hey, is my man we go all the way back man we look was, we was this, ride, dude, this dude is the same dude he is now at 50 years old that he was when we was 15, man. Have a chance to fit, man. Yeah, hey. man. Got to keep it real, man. There go Doc right there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, that's what I heard. So I don't go for the, you know, for the competition. You know, I let people decide that. Yeah. You know, all our job was to go out there, play, get the people their money's worth, and then go home. That was our job. Soon in high school one night, the joint was so crowded, they couldn't let no more people in. Sugar Bear was there. Sugar Bear caught us on the break and said, man, this is where everybody at tonight. So we put Sugar Bear on the mic. Naturally, the crowd went crazy. And then after that, 
We rode with Sugar Bear and EU for about two years, man, because they knew we had a draw. He said, man, he said, y'all boys, I knew y'all could play, but I didn't know y'all had a draw. I mean, the gym was packed out. They couldn't let no more people Appreciate in, you man. give me this opportunity, bro. You got it, bro. Yes, sir. And here with the man of the hour, the birthday boy, my man, Doc. Here you go, Doc. Good, e good evening. Thank you, DC Drama Magazine, number one. First God first. All the glory for the almighty. I like to say it's my birthday today, and I want to say thank you, everybody. I love you. Keep joy and peace in your heart. I got my band member friends here from different bands, so I know you came up from Atlanta, but you in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia now. This is my man Steve here. Yeah, this is my man Steve here. Steve, Shady Groove on the move. This is my man Toddy with the blenders. This is my man Rock and Ron from Prophecy Band right here. Yes, sir. This is my man Side Side from Prophecy Band. Lead talker here. And we got my man Mixmaster back here where we all practice at his studio in Fort Washington. <laughs> Enjoy ourselves, we're gonna party and love forbid. I'm sorry if you missed out. Thank you, God bless y'all. Actually, Air Ray started out. Uh, my mother bought us the first system, I think it was some Yamaha S 511H or 51H or something, a PV CS 800 and a PV board. And we started playing at in the backyard of Lionel Curry's yard, and then we uh started doing sock hops. I don't know if a lot of y'all know what sock hop is. Yeah, but that's no. when you play at the school and everybody wear their socks in the gymnasium for the for uh for like a, a school party. Then we started playing at like Lord and Youth and uh, Boys Village, Oak Hill. We was playing at a lot of the youth facilities. And then it just blossomed. And we started out actually playing top 40. And that was during, I think, 1976. Fat back band, tighten up on the backstroke, uh, flashlight, uh, SOS. We was doing a lot of top 40.
incorporating um, drummer's beat, Herman Kelly. And we started doing the go-go because they had a talent search at Heinz, I want to say Heinz Junior High. And we went down and auditioned for that and did very well in the talent search thing. And then from then on, we was playing what, mass production Firecracker? We played Firecracker and then we kept incorporating Top 40 with our own go-go. And as time went on, Air Raid started creating their own, which a lot of people might don't know, do what Diddy, uh, Freaky D, uh, <laughs> Johnny Guitar Watson, whether you work, whether you uh, work or play, you gotta learn a simple fact. Uh, we started incorporating different music, and then we started creating our own creativity with our own song. We probably one of the groups out here that got a lot of original material.
So that's basically air raid status, and we're glad to still be here and be as a, as a group and a family first uh, to perform here back at home at Capitol High State. My name is Rock and Ron. Back in the day, AMF in band. So I played with AMF back in the day. I've known Doc since I was a little kid before I could even get into the go go, the sim. I used to come up crystal skates and um, check them out, uh, Francis Scott Key days and stuff. And the most famous thing Doc used to get up, would get up and stand up on the drums and do his little roll. And, and that, was, that was just off the hook, man. So That's what you it's about. a pleasure. <laughs> Some of my man Doc, you know, side, he got to get in there all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I call it the EWF groove because I never knew the name of it. And they would do the uh, the percussion breakdown where it would be the Congos. It would go from the Congos and the roller tongs. Um, bah, 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 bah. Let's go, let's go, D flat. Who was? D flat. D flat. That was, that was my, that's my favorite groove all the time. When Mickey used to play it with it, um, it would be Mickey and um, who's the um, roller tongs player? Go Gert. And Go Go Earth.
and the roller coaster players. Yeah. <laughs> to me, Ed. Now, Ed, you cannot, because that the Ed was Air Raid, and is Air Raid. Will always be Air Raid. But only difference with Tidy, when that brand of Air Raid came out. You not messing with that brand either because I was there for every step of the way with yeah. them. Yeah. It, it's to, two different, two different uh, things. But Ed is Air Raid forever. But that the Air Raid with Tidy, Heartbeat, my man Toy when he played Congo. Yeah. Hey, that that band right there used to rock, and nobody, and you know, they may wasn't in the inner city. You know, because S's and all them, they would have that shit locked down. But trust me, that 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 air raid with with uh, what's it, two, two, two tweet and all them, they used to rock too. But no one was as smooth as Ed though on that mic. And I had to give props to Gogo Mike too, and, and Jeff. I'm telling you, Jeff, Jeff could hold it down too. Like a pony, I'm no phony. I'm the only real microphone playing this mic like it's supposed to be safe. New Jack, you all should have stayed out of the business. Uh, what is this? Amateur night of the Apollo. Get off this stage. I'm in rage, just like a lion, trapped inside of a cage. I'm the real king. Rap is a jungle. I never understood how could one go to a party, watch me, stand around and jock me, become a rapper, then try to rock me. Screaming like a demon, you're scheming and dreaming. I'm from the old school. I used to scream and die for less. But I'm not living that way. I let the mic do the talking uh, and let my music play. I still remember the Leonard Town show uh, when I air was late. And, and Jeff rocked the motherfucker. I ain't mean to cuss him. Jeff rocked the mic. Jeff rocked the mic. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have to go with Air Raid on that. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I just have to go with Air Raid because Class Class had a had a, a, a great horn section as well, but it was to me it was more uh, hits, little hits. Air Raid was some jazz. Look at that shit over there. <laughs> watch him, man. I know how they can watch him. But but the Air, Air, Air Raid Air Raid had that jazzy sound. Class came with the straight crank. I mean, me honestly, I would say, um, I would say Air Raid's win. Okay. Air Raid had a jazzy of horn section. It's more, it was more intricate. Intricate. Now, when I was with Class, I had mad love for Air Raid. A lot of people didn't know that, but you couldn't say that back in the day because, you know, it was a rivalry thing with us. So, I had an opportunity to play with the original Air Raid, and I took that opportunity. You know, after, you know, some years went on, like Ron said, you know, when Air Raid uh, dismantled, I brought Air Raid back. And I did go to Daryl Spencer, and I went to Doc, and got their blessing on that. Uptown Hustlers. Uptown Hustlers. The Uptown Hustlers. Uptown, Uptown. Who do Hustlers? The Wild Wild Hustlers. I can't hear you. Hear you.
technician in the back of the reel right now. smooth, laid-back jazz crank. We had a more straight 96 crank. Aggressive. Yeah. Aggressive. So, so, so you, uh, hold this up. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, me and Doc, I've known Doc, man, since back in the Oak Crest Tire days. You know, back when Air Ray owned Maryland. Always had mad respect for them because they craft. They love their craft. They put major time into their craft. And that's the same thing class did. We all, back in those days, we all loved the, the game. It was a game. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about anything like that. It was all about the music. for this music. Air Ray still has that passion. Spanky all day. Tim was good. Spanky was an innovator. If you listen to Spanky's beats back then, he was already ahead in that top man cargo. That's what they're doing right now. So Spanky was ahead of his game. My two favorite groups in class, one was Friggity. All right, the second one was probably B Valley Girls. Air Raid, who came to book it? And I thought, you know, that's it. How you doing? Something. Hi. I just want to say that um, I'm Doc Sister Mona. Oh, how you doing? So I want to give him all the love that I can. Oh, I came home three years ago, and my brother been here for me ever since, four years ago. He's been here for me ever since. I love him to death, and I want everybody to show him all the love that they can, because that's all that brother gives to everybody is love. So let's love Doc. 
today and every day. Thank you. So again, like I said, you know, I got love for my brother's prophecy. I got love for Shady Groove. I got love for Air Raid. And of course, I got love for the blender. And then everybody's showing Doc a whole lot of love on his birthday. I came out support him from the Virginia group. You know, just to, to let him know it's much love all the way around. You know, we got this big thing going on um, July 12th. Is that DMV reunion is, is, is selling out. So y'all better get them tickets now because this thing is, is selling out crazy. Total Control, yeah, Shady Groove, yeah, Ovation. We was getting that crank on, man, back in the day, man. You know, it was a whole lot of fun. Of course, influence from what we heard, you know, everybody growing up back in the 80s, you know, hearing and stuff, putting their own spin on it. From the Virginia side, we came with more of the harmony. Shady Groove was one of the first bands to actually start singing three-man harmony and go-go on our album, Shady Groove on the Move. You know what I'm saying? I brought that to the game myself. And I'm proud to say that, hey, I brought that singing to the game. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it's all a big love. It's one love for everything that we get ready to do, you know, for the future. You know, we got this co-op together, Pump in the Shade Group, Air Raid, you know, and Prophecy. You know, we got this big co-op that we do, and we we, we working together as a unit to, to, to bring our style music back to to Go-Go instead of just that straight crank. Young fellas, ain't nothing wrong with that straight crank, but, hey, and them cover tunes y'all cats playing, hey, we got to we gotta get back to showing the world that D.C. can write music. The DMV can write music. Of course, Freaky D. Freaky D, because Shady Groove had a song called, got a song now called Freaky D, and had a song back then called Freaky D. It was like they Freaky D, Freaky D against our Freaky D, you know what I'm saying? So, but it was two different songs going two different directions, but it was all love, you know what I'm saying? Doc was at my show down at the uh, 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 spot in Maryland. Uh, 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 a couple of weeks ago, and he said, oh, Freaky Deek, huh? I said, yeah, Freaky Deek, baby. <laughs> Welcome to D.C. Drama, y'all. You're here in the DMV at my birthday party. I'm here with my beloved queen, almighty queen, and I'd like to say uh, good evening. Mr. Ruffin, you're doing a fabulous job. I love you, and I love the family, and this is my mom, Mom, this is mom's here. How we doing today? This, this is my young pony. 52nd birthday. Loving, loving, loving. Just wish his brother would be able to be here. But however, we gonna have fun. Yeah, that's queen. It's just me and her and my two daughters and my little grandson. Just lost a father. Her, my stepfather, I lost my first father at 16 in the front yard, and I lost my stepdad this past Christmas, and lost my brother two years ago, so we keeping it rolling, and oh, look here, who come here for a minute, this, this, this is my youngest one right here, this is Devonna, had her since age 10, single parent, but I, we keeping it moving, keep pushing, and don't, don't never think Nothing beats a failure but a try. You got to keep pushing and keep God in your life. Love you, DC Drama Mac. Oh, my goodness. Look here. Here got my oldest one right here. These, yeah, these, these are all my queen bees right here. This this the Lord Ness. And I stand real strong behind family. Family first. First God and then family, like I said, education. So all of us, we, we keeping it moving. Say hi, Don. Hey. Hey. <laughs> These are Michelle here and Johnny too. Calvin. Yeah. Yeah, this family here too also. Yeah, I was going to introduce Gogo Michelle, but my man Doc did it already. So she's going to uh, say some love to my man Doc right here on this special day. Yo, what's up? Gogo Michelle is right here. I just want to say happy birthday to my man Doc Spencer, my big brother. I love him dearly. 
I love all of his family, especially Mama Spencer, who is here in the flesh. And I'm so grateful to be able to see everybody here today. I know that life is too short. And um, sometimes we don't get to say things to people like we should, like I love you and thank you so much for being in my life. So I am truly grateful for having a wonderful friend such as Doc Spencer in my life. He has been very, very good to me. He has been instrumental in helping to, um, in, a, in other words, he's been very helpful in me getting the word about GoGo -Go out to the community. He has come down to Howard University and has done several interviews for me. Um, we ran a six-week segment about GoGo -Go and the things that was going wrong with it, what was going right with it. We even discussed the death of Chuck Brown before he even passed because we saw some things that were going to happen before it even happened. But Doc Spencer is very smart, very intelligent, very knowledgeable about music. I mean, he is just wonderful about music. And, you know, we, he's basically a go-go legend. Doc Spencer is a go-go legend. Favorite Air Raid moments? Oh, my God, what? I snuck in to go see Air Raid at Crystal Skate. I think it was 1985 or something like that. I still have a picture. Matter of fact, I have an old school picture up on Facebook. We had no business being in there, but we got in to see Air Raid at Crystal Skate, y'all. And for y'all youngins that don't know, that's the skating rink that was on Branch Avenue. So y'all Bamas don't even know about Crystal Skate back in the day. All right. One love. Okay, so what's going on with Air Raid now? Air Raid, well, we got a lot of things. A lot of times we don't get into the politics of the city and and, and the venues and stuff like that. Mostly me and my brother, Daryl, rest in peace. We 
did our own show. So a lot of the shows here, hey, Tom Tom. All right, bro. Uh, a lot of the shows here in Capitol Heights, Claggett, Oak Crest Rec, is if you look at a lot of old posters, my brother used to bring Junkyard up here. This is back when not Mo Shorter. Dirt, Dirt McCray used to have all of them, heavy one and all of them in the van. And uh, we would perform here, Claggett, Bradbury Heights, back when Sugar Band and Deuces Wild was playing. And they were all from Capitol Heights, so it was like a robbery type thing for us. So me and Daryl started investing in equipment, and that's how Air Ray was really known, because they said, y'all are called Baby Ray Essence because of our equipment.
Um, what was your favorite venue back in the day? My favorite venue, I want to say the Catholic schools because when I say that, meaning it was a lot of Catholic, they had black student unions. So the Catholic school kids maybe couldn't go to venues like Cherries, Coliseum, Coliseum yeah, you know. and stuff like that because of, you know, they was worried about their kids. But the Catholic schools like the Matha, All Saints, Curl, <laughs> those venues was nice venues where people people really had a good time and sweated like I don't know what. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed all of them because it's just thankful that you, you're able to entertain people and, and people to see the happiness of people enjoying themselves. All right, how did Soccer To Me, which is one of my favorite, favorite albums, came, in, came into play? Saga to me came into play, Diallo. Um, I want to say we were we were down there. If you listen to Saga to me and who come to boogie, it's kind of like the same riff. So it was like everything was on the one. When I say the one, ta 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 ta, ta uh, uh, uh. So it's on the one. So it's, it's almost like a James Brown feel. Ding a ching, ding a ching, ding 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 a ching, ding it. And a little pe a lot of people don't know, I had China Boogie blow Oscar Meyer, so that's where that horn part come in. My baloney had a first name. So that's how they came into play. Take care. Lo love you, family. All right, that's love a wrap. Um, Doc and Daryl, mom, mom's house, like I said. Band practice in the basement, you know, Doc was a, always joking. Um, Doc, <laughs> Doc was always on jokes. I'm, I'm going to just say that. But anyway, um, we'll go to band practice out there. I think I remember one practice uh, before I really got in the band. You know, I was I was all over the place because I didn't know what was going on, um, you know. But I just left reality. No, I just left Red in the boys, actually. And you know, everybody had their own songs. Everybody back then had their own songs. So, like I said, I was there for a, a minute, both Reds, and then I went to Eric. All it like that, it just happened like that. Um, going to practice, but anyway, going to shows, Moonlight in. Wherever the shows were back then, Tim would do the first set. And I guess to introduce me to the crowd, it would bring me on. It would bring me on the second set or just a little bit of the second set. We'll play period first or second, as long as I played a little bit, just to you know, get the crowd, uh, I guess, warmed up, used to me. And, you know, we used to have fun. My man, Ralph, Ralph, rest in peace, Ralph. Me and Ralph, and I was already hooked up. My man Daryl Hall was a road time player because he had just left Red and the Boys when I came to Red and the Boys, actually. But anyway, we all we we was together. Um, us three always is joining. We used to, uh join. As a matter of fact, Ralph used to give Jeff Jeff a hard time. We was young, doing crazy stuff, <laughs> doing crazy stuff. A lot of that I can't talk about. Uh, we always played at all the wrecks, you know, mostly Merlin wrecks. I'm gonna put it that way. We did Bury Farms too. I'm trying to think. Oak Crest, Oak Crest is coming to me now. Oak Crest, uh, wreck. That was one of them. Pepper Mill wreck. Um, they used to have some crazy fights out. Oh, Pepper Mill. I used to see Jacks come over the back of cars back then.
back there. They had the chains on. Anyway, Walker Female home on coming back. Got got robbed from a coat. They took my coat, but the crazy part is he never, I guess they ain't check. Uh they didn't get my chains off my neck, but they got the coat. And I don't think back then they might wouldn't even take a wallets back then. Cause I mean I wasn't carrying one. I don't even know what I kept my ID in, but that's another story. But we had some good times, um, different shows. Doc and them was from Sula. Sula High School. We played Sula High School, Potomac High School. Like I said, we did all the wrecks in Merlin. Played far, you know, in near far. We was there. We had some good times, man. Um, like I said, rest in peace to Ralph. He kept us laughing. He liked to join all the time. He joined. He stayed on playtime back then. Um, but we had we had a nice unit. Um, Keith Exum, keyboard extraordinaire. Bakes extraordinary, A, Adrian, uh, my man Darren Grice, come from Ray Essence back in the day, 78, Earl, the 79, that, that high theater tape y'all probably heard of, some of y'all anyway. Um, Ed on the mic, can't forget Ed. Um, who else? Jeff, Jeff on the trumpet, my man Darren Hall, Rotor Toms, Tim Bali, Cowbell. Of course, Doc, I don't think I left. Oh, Boogie Dudes on the guitar. They just guitar upside down, backwards. Boogie Dudes. I think I named the whole band with me. <laughs> we didn't have a female in the group. But it, it, we still we still like brothers. We still, when we get together, it's a big party. And Doc always want to want to take you to his eating spot where he don't even know how to get to. He gets lost. Every time we go there, but uh, I ain't gonna talk about my man Doc. Rest in peace, Daryl. Thanks for the opportunity. We had a ball. Who come to boogie? Who go, who gonna boogie? Boogie's my song. That beat I still play that beat today. A lot of people play that beat today. They don't even know where it come from. But that's back in air raid. That's an '83 beat. Oh. Thank you. 